nail or beauty school was just the beginning, right? What on earth do you do now? Welcome to the Sell on Success podcast with Monaco Nail Academy. Our topics stretch beyond nails and into all things sell on related, business, marketing, and social media, and at the very least, hits you with real honest stories about our experiences. This isn't school. This is real life, real business, and really freaking hard work. The Sell on Success podcast is recorded live on Mondays at 5 p.m. New Zealand time via facebook.com slash Monaco Nail Academy and is available on Spotify and Google playlists. Before we get started, wherever you are, thumbs up, tag a friend in the comments or hit that share button and support small business. So welcome to another Monday, guys. Um, Penny here from Monaco Nail Academy and I am joined by Jesse. Say hi. <laughs> um, so you guys are familiar with Jesse. We've both done podcast episodes a thousand times before. I, I um, haven't done it a thousand times, but well, I have. Getting there. Few. Close. <laughs> We've just finished a big day of e-file training in the academy, um, which is kind of halfway. Um, if you're watching live on Facebook, rather than listening somewhere, we have a different background today. And that's just because we shuffled around because I was using the other desk, blah, blah, blah. Whatever, it's boring, but that's why we have different backgrounds. <laughs> if you're watching us live, um, what did you do today, Jesse? I did lots of admin work today. So fun. And I feel good because I was able to get through quite a lot. So Yeah, you seem to have like a pretty chill, well, like, no, a successful day. Yeah, when so chill inside, I'm like, <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, th- it's just it's just cool to see when you do things for the second time how much quicker you can be so yeah yeah. I think it's such a confidence boost like when you're learning something new and the second time you realize how much of the first time you took in yeah yeah like because the first time everything's brand new like I mean like because we're talking in context of Jesse learning a new role with Monaco but also nail tech training it's the same thing yeah totally you don't realize when you're stressing over that first set of nails when you do the second set you're going to have remembered it like over half of it and I say it so many flipping times I don't know who told me this but you're not practicing one hand of nails you're practicing five times the same thing five times that's so true like every time you do a nail you're practicing people are just like oh well you know, I had a client there and she was there for three hours and I only got one set done. And I'm like, cool, you practice 10 times. Yeah, that's so good. That's such a good way of looking at it. But I can't take credit for that. I don't know who told me that. <laughs> but it, or, that always sat with me afterwards. I was just like, oh, yeah, that's so true. Yeah, that, that's a good way of looking at it. That Well, mm. that's like when I tell students, uh, like some of you that have trained with us before will have heard me say this before, but when people are freaking out about not being good enough and they're on day three and they've been sharing models with a buddy so maybe they're on their third client but it's actually like their 14th ever nail and we've worked out previously based on our like sales stats and stuff that I've done approximately 275,000 nails over the last 11 years so I'll, I'll bring that little little fun fact so that's out. why she's good <laughs> your like, fun facts always have numbers in them always all your fun facts are mathematical is that bad calculations no it's just penny i think i'm just a black and white person and numbers are yeah. really black and white yeah. but it's a good it's another good way of changing your perspective like going like oh, i'm three days in and i've done this several times and i should be good at it and then i'm like yeah but actually 14 compared to two hundred seventy-five thousand, like you really have no way of comparing yeah anything yeah for for a long time um so if you are watching us live on facebook as we record this pop into the comments and let us know how your day's gone what you've done and achieved today even if what you achieved was like you survived that's Keeping okay. a baby alive, Holly. The, yeah. yeah the, that's that's a big deal. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I could do that necessarily. <laughs> um, Some days I don't know if I will. It always works yeah, but, out in the is end. That because, <laughs> is that because they, they're going to disappear or because you're going to kill them? No, because they're like, <laughs> they their goal in life is to like destroy me. <laughs> yeah. You're the one that made four of them. I know. Like if at first you don't succeed. Pass it on to a sibling. <laughs> They'll do it. <laughs> like, the They're first, not old enough yet. The first three are behaving. So like, well, it's Joey's turn. Joey's yeah. going to be shit today. Like, <laughs> yeah. Take turns. 
So we thought that we would chat today about some marketing stuff. And this is quite hard to um, name the podcast episode because we've called it the definition of marketing, but that's quite boring. It doesn't really explain what we're planning on um, talking through. Um, so, oh, that's nice. Um, so we just got a comment on the Facebook Live if you're listening to this from, is it Simwa? Hi, I hope, Simwa. I hope I said your name right, um, saying that they like us and are following us. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so we thought we would chat about, like, the, yeah, the definition of marketing, but I just don't think that accurately describes what we're going to do today. <laughs> Basically, we wanted to chat um, about what marketing really means and how you can actually have successful marketing strategies and there's this is I mean a topic that we could talk about for days and days and days and feel free to drop us a message or a comment asking for things that you want us to chat about um mm. those of us that do podcast episodes have quite a varied range of experiences so it can be quite good to get topics from you guys that we can just chat about um and share our experiences but what we're going to go over today is yeah just kind of what marketing means to each individual and how your marketing can be different to the person next to you or down the road or um, whoever you feel like you're competing against, which I think, um, oh, we need to add that to the brainstorm, we're not, the, um, the competition free zone. Yeah. We need your whole We were going to do that today, that. but we don't have enough of us with us. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're currently brainstorming episode ideas if you guys want to um, – to let us know some ideas that you would like us to cover in future episodes. Please let us know because we, we want to give you what you want. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's no point in us doing this if we're just, like, listening to ourselves because we're very entertaining, but <laughs> <laughs> but we, we could be this entertaining at home. <laughs> just for ourselves. <laughs> Do you really want to watch? <laughs> like... <laughs> Yeah, well, you, you should give us topics. It's in your <laughs> best interest to give us topics. Um, alrighty, so there's this definition of marketing that I learnt ages ago, and I don't know where I got it either. Um, but I saw once that the definition of marketing is who you are plus how you can help plus a call to action, and that becomes your marketing strategy, I guess. So uh, we just thought that we'd chat about what each of those parts mean to us and to students that we've helped in the past and then come up with like an idea for you guys to talk more about how you're going to take your marketing going forward with your salons so um the first part of it was who you are and I think this is so important and something that not enough people are really clear on like what do you reckon Jesse like do you have a clear idea on the personality of your business is it even something you've really thought about I feel like my whole life has been treading water up to this point and so no I can't say that I've sat down and like written you what do you you call it uh not an alias avatar avatar you like I really liked that podcast episode but I haven't even sat down and just and, and really sort of avatars planned out my avatar are like step three like yeah and yeah. so so is that what you're talking about like sort of an avatar what's our business like it, yeah it's like who the avatars go to like avatars are yes. a little, yeah, yeah 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 it's like it's um so it's really okay I like food a lot so let's Same. Use, yeah so good okay, yeah. um let's use food analogies um so if we think about like the places that we like if you we're hungry right now so we are it's quite likely um i am <laughs> okay so where are you immediately thinking like if you let's say you're not waiting till you get home what are you gonna eat where are you gonna go wendy's okay why because they have more filling options in drive through Okay, so at the moment, the thing that you are, the thing that you need the most right now is to be full. You don't want to get hungry because you've got a long drive home, especially because it's the first big rain of the colder season and no one can drive today. Um, so you've got a long drive home and you want to be full the whole time. That's your number one priority? It's not the long drive home. It's more the um, 
fast food is really unhealthy and so I want to get something that keeps me full and then I don't feel like I'm going to go home and eat more. Okay. So it's kind of bang for buck. It's mm. you want to actually feel yeah. fulfilled. Yeah, And totally. so you're saying Wendy's has the best, like, quality filling food. Mm-hmm. Cool. Definitely. Perfect. Okay. So what about on your birthday, where would you go? Either out for a curry or to Mexico. I love Mexico. Okay, why why Mexico? Because their fried chicken is the most amazing thing on earth. So flavor. Yeah. Yeah. So your number one priority is you want the flavor. Like, I mean, you're not going to go to Wendy's for that. No. Because it. I mean, it's all right, but no. Somebody's getting a divorce if I'm taken to Wendy's <laughs> on my birthday. <laughs> <Like>. <laughs> so we start to form a picture of like for different occasions there are different places that you go and these places all fall under convenient food you know Mm -hmm. even mexico being a restaurant oh um, it's so fast so it's all convenient food Mm -hmm. and um teresa who's watching live on facebook just put a comment saying that marketing is essentially brand recognition which ties in exactly with what we're saying like we're saying that wendy's is like good filling but quick food and Mexico is like intense flavor yeah and if you want to feel super fancy then you go somewhere like um I like Ortolana and Britama which has like the fairy sh- lights and yes yeah. the sky tower yeah what's the one at the top that one's fancy um, eh? orbit yeah yeah mm. like so there are places where you go and you get a tiny amount of food on a really stupidly big plate and that but you feel fancy that's really funny because i do choose certain restaurants for certain things like it's not like what i feel like taste wise it's more what i feel like experience wise so yes. curry i know it's going to be good i know that it's like tried and true mexico is fast cheap and tastes amazing Orbit is fancy. I could go to that place. Where's that place that has like it's like that underground food market? Like the the night markets? No, or... is it? It's not eight. No, that's the Langham. Eight's at the old Langham. Yeah. And see, that's a buffet. So you like your priority is you want to be full. And at eight, they've got eight different kitchens, eight different flavors. So yeah. With a big group of people, everyone's happy. Yeah. So like that's that's their mm, thing. Definitely. And, and interesting with what you said about the curry, it's reliable. Yeah, it's just which to me yeah. is why I go to McDonald's. It's not going to be good, but I know that it's going to be what I'm expecting. So I can't be disappointed because I know yeah. it's not going to be that. Good. I don't think I've ever had McDonald's and it's tasted different, or I've been upset. Yeah. Like it's, you just, it's re, yeah, reliable. You're disappointed in your own life choices. You, but you not what order they a did. Big Mac, you get a Big Mac, it's cheap, it's good, but it never changes. Like whatever McDonald's you go to, you get the same thing. Like I've been to Mexico's where their fried chicken was dry. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, hey. Yeah, but McDonald's is so formulated. Yeah. So you start to get the idea that all of these places that are serving us food have personalities. And that's what we want our salons mm-hmm. and our businesses to do is have personalities. Like um, you might go somewhere because it is reliable. You might go somewhere because um, it's quick. You might go somewhere because it's going to last long. Um, you might go somewhere because you want to feel fancy. Like if I want to feel fancy, then I'm – and I'm talking more with like salons now – then I'll go somewhere like East Day Spa where they have like all the little extras and like private rooms and dim lighting and like yeah. essential oils and like all that sort of thing. And if my nails chip a few days later, I'll be bummed. But you that's went not why for I the relax. Yeah. Yeah. So you went for the luxury pampering, not for the quality of. Yeah, exactly. The polish. Yeah. So, um, so tell us if you are watching live who who your business's personality is. Um, Like, I think mine's a bit tricky now because it's so inherently tied in with just me. It's just, um, it's just nails. I don't know. But, um, but when I had my full-time salon and it was staffed and, um, and a fairly sized business, but still from home, I would say our personality was that we were like relaxed and, and friendly like it was 
really important to us that people, like we would have clients come in two or three hours early because they were on their way from one place to another and they thought, well, if they can fit me in earlier, they can. And if not, I'll take a book. Mm. And the fact that someone felt comfortable enough to come into an appointment three hours early to sit on our couch and read a book, like that's that kind of sums up what we wanted for our salon was just to like, we had people come in who um, would say that they came to us because they were breastfeeding. They wanted a pedicure, but they didn't want to sit in like a cold environment, like a, a mall salon or whatever and, and breastfeed their baby. And they liked the fact that they could sit back and relax and have a cup of tea and get their, their um, pedicure done, but also prioritize their newborn baby. Mm. They, and I just, it was important to us that that is what, people thought of when they thought of our salon like um and I think it can vary quite greatly and that's part of why we don't really believe in competition because some like someone who wants to feel fancy or who um like has someone who wants something more boutique like they want to you know like sometimes you just want to know where your money went you know you want yeah. to feel like you went somewhere expensive that's not us. Like we were a lot more relatable, a lot more chilled out, I think. Um, so if you but want it's, to feel. It, who, whose priority do you want to cater to? So I remember Penny telling us during training, you've got people who either prioritize the price, they prioritize hygiene, they prioritize quality, or they prioritize the convenience. environment, convenience, all these different things. And it's just like, okay, well, what kind of, so what are your avatars? What are the clients that you actually want? And that will help you find out who you are. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You and and you can't be everything to everyone. So don't bother. Like if you <clears throat> um there's if if you try and get every single person, no one will be happy at all. Mm. Because you can't. Like you can't possibly try, like McDonald's could not try and keep everyone happy who wanted fast, convenient food, reliable food, but also to feel fancy. You can't yeah, do no. all those things. It's They're trying, possible. though. They've got that, like, <laughs> the, um, the gourmet line. Yeah. Um, and they give you table service now. <laughs> do they? Yeah. You can choose if you go in and use those things on the side instead of going up to the counter, you can choose table service. Oh, no. And I, but I always do purely because it means I can sit down, get my kids settled, and then the food arrives, not wait at the counter with all my kids. Fair enough. Paveen said she works um, with a luxury salon where we try and provide relaxed atmosphere, yet interactive, and obviously give the best and thorough service. So that's, that's quite an interesting um, point because I personally think that that describes a lot of salons. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we're trying to achieve with the who we are, like um, we know from Paveen's description that it is um, like luxury, it's high end. Um, but they're trying to be relatable at the same time. And that that's pretty good. But um, but you want to get in as deep as you can to be something different. So um, it doesn't have to be super, super far outside the box. Um, but if you're trying to be like relatable luxury, then zero in on everything you can do to be relatable luxury, like, like make it the first thing you think about when you open the doors is like, am I doing everything I can today to be relatable luxury? Yeah. What do you, cool. what do you think, Jesse? you would like the, the, who you are, like, you know, you're saying um, it centers around your avatars, which is totally true. And if you guys aren't sure what we're talking about with avatars, there is an earlier podcast episode where we described finding your perfect client and how to do that. And that's, um, probably my favorite podcast episode actually um so go back and find that one um but you you want to keep people happy but that's not possible if you're not happy so what do you think jesse would be the type of business that would make you the happiest um i think it goes off what i want from a salon so what i want from a salon is what I'm going to offer because that's just naturally what I'm going to enjoy. Yeah. And for me, I'd say my top priority is quality, then hygiene. And then 
if I can get both those things and the price isn't like, oh, it doesn't like make my eyes water, then I don't really care about the price. Um, so yeah, I think mine are like hygiene and quality. Do you care how long a service takes? That's my downfall is I'm quite slow. No, but from but a I like it. But yeah, I don't mind long appointments because I've gotten away from my kids. And like, I feel like when I'm getting my hair done, they're just like, oh, sorry, your hair's fine. I didn't think it would take this long. Oh, here's this magazine. Oh, here's this. And I'm just like, I don't care. I told my husband I was going. And I knew how long it would approximately take. But if it takes, like if I've walked in and told you a time that I need to be gone by, yes, I'm going to get stressed. But I never give people a time. And as a client still, do you care about like the interior design? Yes. What What would you like? Something aesthetically pleasing. Um, so more like warm or minimalist, trendy or? I think minimalist but still cozy, which is kind of my style anyway. I'm, I think I'm quite minimalist, but I have the skills to make a place feel quite cozy yeah and that's what I enjoy because to me minimal is clean <laughs> so then do you care about the quality of conversation yes yeah I so want to be personality is important too for you yeah yeah see and then on the flip side I don't want to spend an hour like in awkwardness like I can't talk to this person and she doesn't like me. She just wants to get her job done. Like I don't go for convenience because for me, when I go to things like that, it's always luxury, whether it's a luxury appointment or not, like getting my nails done is a luxury. Yeah. <laughs> so I want somebody to like talk to me. It's not like, oh, my priority is getting my nails done. So I don't care whether you talk to me or not. I just want my nails to be done at the end of this appointment. Like that isn't my priority. If I'm going to get my nails done by someone else, then my priority is the experience yeah like it is it's I want it to be I want to feel fancy and for me that means that I don't actually care so much about the conversation I care about the like the five senses like I care about the music that's on I care about the like what I feel when I look around so if it's relaxing or uh, I personally don't like too minimal industrial trendy kind of like that feels quite cold to me yeah if it as long as it doesn't feel cold yes yeah, like yeah. I feel like if you're on the thing is is to get a, a a license you can't really be on carpet but to me it would be like okay if you've got a concrete floor or a wooden floor you put like a rug yeah down I was gonna or, say, you can have rugs um yeah so or like there's a plant plant makes everything so much Plants cozier and so much more homely and can make the air feel cleaner, like whether it's a subconscious thing or not. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. all for placebo effects. There are so many things in my life that I do because someone oh, yeah. said that it fixes stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but I feel good about it. And who cares if it's the placebo effect? It still has worked. Yeah. Because the placebo effect is an effect. Yeah, exactly. It has affected your life. So hopefully all of these things are helping you guys get a rough idea of like, who you want to be um, in terms of the, do you want to be convenient? Do you want to be well-priced? Do you want to be high, like seen as being the most hygienic in the industry? Do you want to be the best quality? Um, do you care about um, the, the music that you play, the sense in the room, the visuals or the comfort? So someone might care more about what it looks like and someone else might care more about the comfort of the seat. Like all of these things will add up to a business personality. And ideally you should be able to sum it up in like one or two words. So like McDonald's is convenient, reliable, somewhere like um, at the Sky Tower, it's fancy and quality, things like that. And no two businesses will ever really be exactly the same. They might fit into broader categories together. But having a really clear idea of who 
your business is, what that personality is, is extremely important before you bother doing any marketing. Because what we said before is you cannot be everything to everyone. No. So you have to pick who you are going to try and please and then show in your marketing that you are that personality so that the right people know to find you. Well, what do they say in university? You choose your major. Like what's yeah. your major yes, in your that's marketing? Exactly it. Like what are you going to concentrate on? Because you can't – yes, you can be a jack of all trades, but like like we we sort of advise girls that come here if they're just starting off in the beauty industry, like just master the nails first before you add another service. And just because it's so, it's so nice to have that under your belt and then you can really feel like you've mastered it before you move on. Yeah. And I think that's important because you've almost got like a major, even if your major changes later on, like, okay, I Which did nails and now I've people. done this and I actually really enjoy this and more people want me to do this. That's okay. But at least you haven't got like your hands in too many pots and yeah. you're doing a half ass job of all of them. I think that's, that's a trap a lot of people fall into a, like just thinking, Oh, well, I'm not making enough money from nails yet. So I'm going to add lashes or, mm. you know, whatever and that's fine if you have mastered one but I think like if you are the best in your industry at something you you make all the money from it mm. like I don't have time to do lashes because because I'm doing all the nails yeah. kind of thing um so hi, yeah we're getting a few people watching live hi Catherine um Did and so she just got home oh yeah Catherine, yeah. <laughs> Catherine was with us today did you just get home now um so moving on from who you are and trying to define who your business is and what personality it has, you also want to tie in how you can help. So this is more from the avatar's perspective, more mm -hmm. from the client perspective, what they're actually coming to you for. So you can have this personality, personality that's tied into the sights and sounds and smells of your salon and also the comfort, the experience, the quality and that sort of thing. But how are you actually going to change that person's day? Because one of my favorite um, extremely cheesy quotes is that every day you have the opportunity to be a day maker. So like you have the opportunity every single day to make someone's day. And we have that opportunity multiple times a day because someone's coming to us for a break. And I love the idea that any single person who walks into your salon and sits down could just get their nails done, but they could walk out and be like, I just had the best experience. I had so and much fun yeah. and I had these, I'm so excited about my nails. And that's exactly why I called myself Shine Nail Design. Like, I feel like it sort of came and I was so excited about it. And it was only, it wasn't until like a month or so later that I was just like, this can be kind of dumb. Like, I'm sure people think it's, like, really boring. But to me, the important thing to me was that these ladies were coming and they walk out shining. So not not their nails. And I didn't mean their nails. Like, I just know that when I go and get a luxury treatment, I walk out feeling like, oh, I just did something for me because I'm worth it. And then I couldn't stop. And then you can't stop looking at your nails. And even though they're shining inside, you're shining. And that's what's important to me is that they walk out feeling special. See, I would, I would say that a lot of that is going to tie into your business personality. Yeah. Like, I didn't know. Um, hi, Rochelle. Um, I didn't know that about your name. I always thought shine was just like, the, the finished product like they're good nails they they're I don't know yeah I, and it, and, it, and, and I always think about it and I always second guess it and I'm just like oh like no I don't think anybody really understands the name and it's just so it feels boring and bland but when I think about it it was like almost an epiphany and I was just like shine I just want to make people shine I want to make people happy like like, yeah, some people go to get their nails done and so their priority is good-looking nails at the end. And I give good-looking nails, just so you know. <laughs> but, like, for me, like, my priority is that they have a good experience. Like, most of the women that come to me, my avatars are all me, like mums who barely get a break. This is a cool hi. <laughs> we have a third oh, podcast. 
<laughs> my phone is talking to us from the other side of the room. I don't know why. Maybe it's um, a bit like Siri. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's how I came up with my name. But, yeah, I want to make people feel like that, that I want to help people feel so that's, like that. So that's exactly what we're talking about with the how we can help. And mm. that becomes an integral part of your marketing strategy is you know your business personality, but how you can help is is what's uh, your definition what you were just saying reminds me of that Roald Dahl quote um ah oh, someone look it up for me who's watching live it's like um, we can look it up yeah. if you're I'll okay you guys entertain yourselves while I type this in because I can't do two things at once um <laughs> <laughs> I can only talk mindlessly I while love I, quotes while I type um oh yeah is, I love this yeah, one if you have if you have good thoughts, they'll shine out of your face like sunbeams and you'll always look lovely. Yes, and I, that's what I wanted. I want women to walk out with good thoughts and so they were shining from the inside, not yeah. just the nails. So every time that you put together any piece of marketing, be it just a social media post or a whole campaign, that should be the number one thing that you're thinking of is like, does this make the person looking at this piece of marketing feel like they could shine like because that's the thing is you're looking for people who who want that because not everyone yeah. cares someone who walks into a mall salon just wants their nails done and quickly and cheaply uh, there's they don't this a, price they don't yeah shit if they shine or not mm. but like i would love to leave shining that sounds mm. nice well yeah i just know that it's hard for women to get time to themselves yeah so Teresa. I like this as well. Teresa's told us the definition of hers, which her salon name is Amplify Beauty. And um, her little slogan is, we turn up the you. That's cool. That is so cool because I've I've seen Teresa's salon name. I knew what it was. But again, like I didn't really know the ins and outs of yeah. it. Yeah. And I didn't really think about it either because people just accept what they're told. Like you told me your salon's called Amplify Beauty. Cool, it's called Amplify Beauty. Like I didn't really put any thought into it. Like when someone goes, yeah. let's go to the shop called Blessings, I don't go, ah, oh, but what does that mean? Like it, <laughs> it's the marketing that you put behind a name that tells me I did. what no, just you are. <laughs> so I love that we turn up the you. That that's, is cool. That's cool because I think that that really speaks to people who are creatives like us, like we're – fairly creative visual people and to to amplify the uniqueness and mm. to be like I want nails that are just super me nails that's what that tells me is that if I go to Teresa I'm going to get nails that are me nails I'm not going to get cookie cutter nails that anyone could do I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna walk out feeling like myself that nobody else has like yes. that's what I love about all the I don't like nail art I don't want to tell you stories, but I don't like nail art. And, but I do enjoy sort of tweaking manis that are so classic and so beautiful, but make these manis them. Like nobody else has that. Like lots of people get that classic red, but nobody else has that classic red with that little bit of pigment and that little star galaxy thing. Yeah. Like, that's you. You're the only one that's got that and probably the only one that will ever get it. But then even just for like a, like I'm thinking of um, my Charlotte who um, who is a, a pinup like blogger and for her amplifying the Charlotte might be long almonds that are just red, like va va yeah. red. But that is amplifying That's her. the her. But it's really interesting because I like Teresa's work. I like Jessie's work. I'd happily go to either of them. But now through this conversation, I feel like if I go to Jessie, I'm going to walk out feeling like I'm walking a little bit taller than I was before. And if I go to Teresa, it's not that I'm not going to walk out shining. It's just that I know that the thing I'm 100% getting is to feel me. Your nails are going to speak to yeah. you. And you're not going to necessarily not get the other with, you're not going to not get you nails with Jesse, and you're not going to not shine with Teresa. Yeah, but that's so your whatever priority. your number yeah. one priority is, you, you choose someone based on that. And just through this conversation, I'm like, okay, well, this week I feel like Teresa. Next week I feel like Jesse, And I need to see that in your guys' marketing so that I know who to go to. I don't care, like, um, 
like for example um with Parveen her definition of the salon she works in which was like perfectly adequate it's relatable luxury but I mean yeah cool but it's it doesn't speak to me the same way that I'm gonna Whereas walk that out speaks shining to me <laughs> yeah and so then luxury. You're, you're the better client for her yeah whereas for me I'm like I want to shine and I want to feel more like and that's, me that's so true because there are like three um girls who if I was ever going to go and get my nails done I sort of just think oh well I'll go to her oh no and then like the next week I'll feel like going to the other one and I never go to them because I can't bring myself to spend money on myself but especially with something I can do but yeah like yeah it's, it's so different like each week there's a different person that I'm like craving to go to yeah yeah and they can all offer me different things. So we're getting a couple of examples coming through on the live comments of other people's definitions. So Rochelle said hers, which um, this is Rochelle that you guys hear on the podcast frequently. Hers is Aphrodite and Iris. And she has said, mine is based around beauty. I knew I wanted it to be beauty based, but not solely nail based. Aphrodite is the goddess of beauty and Iris is the flower of beauty. So she just picked two things that meant beauty but then I think the challenge with that is to take <clears throat> that definition and amplify it to be specific beauty like it's you could cater to like uh glamour models and instagram girls and focus specifically on physical beauty making people look the nicest that they can mm. but I don't necessarily think that's what Rochelle's actually going for and there's so many different ways of defining what beauty is so like if because if if a salon is um is just going to make me perfect like good luck but like that's yeah, I was not what say, I'm interested in um yeah for me I'm just like I'm not a goddess yeah I'm not beautiful so <laughs> but um, I know that you offer a couple of different things and especially for a fake tan. If I'm seeing the word goddess with fake tan, yes, I'm coming to you. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. But so when just, I think about my nails, I don't think goddess. No. And that doesn't mean it's wrong. It means that Jesse oh, no, and I sorry, aren't relating that's not, to. No, I, I'm uh, just, yeah, we're trying to talk about how this is relating to us as a customer. Yeah. To us, us two specific humans. Um, but and how me, just the name of your business can draw you in. Yeah. And I need to see more from, for example, Rochelle's marketing for me to understand that Aphrodite and Iris is going to give me something that I prioritize mm. because, yes, beauty, um, but, like, I don't really care about that. I do care about being more me and I do care about shining, um, but I, I care <laughs> less about being... We're both Perfect. beautiful, Penny, from yeah, Rochelle, Rochelle. commenting, being like, guys. <laughs> Whereas um, if I was a bride, I'm going to be looking at that. Yes. If I was going to Fiji and I'm going to be in a bikini, <laughs> I'm never going to be in a bikini. But if I was going away on holiday, I'm going to be looking for that sort of thing. That's, that's such a good point, though, actually, the bride thing, because if I'm getting married – then I care less about um, amplifying the me because I feel like the whole day has been put together around and me. And I care less about the luxury. I care about what it's going to look like yeah. on the day for the photos. And so mm. um, Rochelle's stuff is speaking more to me that it's like more perfect, more like making you a, a more perfect version of yourself. And that's what mm. I would want for a wedding. Um, Tony said, I feel like my name doesn't really represent my business feeling very well, but it still works with it being my initials. So Tony's so is perfect. TLC Nails. And if you want to follow her, it's TLC.NailsNZ. Um, but that's what we're talking about really in, in terms of marketing is names don't mean anything in the first place. Monaco means nothing compared, mm. like when you put it in context of Monaco Nail Academy. But Kmart means nothing. Countdown means nothing. Countdown to what? Now let's put that song in my head. Um, like it, it's the name doesn't matter so much. It's what you do with that name. And the reason that we got on to talking about names more specifically is because Jessie came up with her salon name specifically around the feeling and the personality of her business and the personality mm. of the people she wants to help. And Teresa also came up with her name around 
the personality of her business and the personality of her avatars. And so it just so happens that their names gave us their personalities, but with Tony's name being her initials and TLC nails, it's we just need the marketing to now tell us what we're getting specifically from that salon that speaks to us more than any other salon does that is different to what we get from any other um, salon. If that, yeah. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So we've gone two thirds of the way through the marketing definition so far. So um, who you are, what your business personality is, and how you can help, which is not you can do nails. I don't care that you can do nails because thousands of people can do nails. But only, and I'm coming to you because I know you can do nails. Yeah, how else I got can that. You help? that. Yeah. What yeah. else are you offering me? How are you going to do my No nails? one else has promised to amplify my me. Mm -hmm. And no one else has promised to make me shine with sunbeams out of my face when I leave. And no one else is calling me a goddess. Yeah. And no one else is going to give me tender love and care. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, like, the, yeah. So that's the who we are and the how we can help. And then when you are marketing, you need people to take action. So that's when you get to the call to action. So this definition of marketing that we've been covering off um, in this episode is who you are plus how you can help plus a call to action. So um, the calls to action is only, and Jesse and I were kind of talking about and brainstorming this earlier today, it should only really be 20% or less mm. calling someone to buy your stuff. A call to action is asking people to to act. But um, the best example that Jesse came up with was like a poll. So just being like, um, you know, this is who I am and how I can help. But which of these options would you prefer? How do you want to interact with me? So running a poll on social media to say, um, you know, would you prefer, um, I'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head, but like, um, nights or during the week or yep. would you prefer a Saturday morning or a Friday evening or lavender scents or like we're using a spiced orange oil on our towels at the moment so like lavender or orange um, would you prefer me to buy in some autumn colors or some more pigments would or? you rather I invest my profit in a hot towel warmer or a paraffin wax machine like it's I want so both yes yeah, <laughs> so so doing polls like that can still be considered calls to action. But the second that someone interacts with you, you have a relationship. It's one-sided. All marketing is one-sided until someone interacts with you. And that can be if they're driving past a billboard on the street, like when they get to their destination, Googling that business or looking it up or, um, mm. or going and liking it on Facebook or like an action can be a lot of stuff, but you need them to interact. And a call to action can be me seeing a billboard and then turning to Jessie and talking to her about it because I have still acted having seen that piece of marketing and I have a relationship to that business now because I've had a full conversation about it. What I found interesting when me and Penny were talking about it was she's talked a lot about the 80-20 rule when you're um, – providing a service to your clients like 80% of it needs to be free content 20% of it needs to be asking you to buy something or book in selling. or something selling yeah. um but these calls of action can be across all of that so if you're asking your client whether they would prefer a Saturday morning or a Friday night it's still free content to them but you're getting the engagement yeah so that is included in your 80 yeah, it's just really important how you phrase it because if you say, are you more likely to book in with me on yeah. Saturday or at night, that is selling. But if you say, um, Would you do look, you prefer yeah. to relax in your evenings or your weekends? Hmm. Now you're engaging with me and you as the salon owner are going to get the same result, but one of those fell into the 80 and one fell into the 20. And they feel like they're going to get something like, oh, there's a poll and she's going to get one of these. And so if yeah. I click on it, I'm going to get that. Yeah. And then they're more loyal to you as well, because now they've invested in building your business. Like they're part of what built your business to be what it is kind of thing. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah. Like the that's more you cool. interact with a business, the more you're like, oh, I'm part of that. Like, like if there was a poll and they said, would you rather a hot towel warmer or a paraffin wax treatment? And then I turned up and I had 
sort of I you voted voted for the paraffin wax treatment I'd like feel like I really helped that person. Yeah, totally and then if you're clever you could take um like so say paraffin wax one and now you've got a paraffin wax warmer well if you're clever you then approach all the people that voted for a paraffin wax warmer and offer them like a two for one or bring a friend and try this out or a wine and cheese evening where everyone gets a free paraffin wax treatment oh, to try out this idea. new service. Like mm-hmm. you approach and you go, hey, you were an integral part of me choosing this, so let's celebrate and bring you in to be more part of it. So a call to action can be stuff like that and it can be just comments on a Facebook post, but it shouldn't be like, and we all fall into this trap, but not comment below and tell me this. Like, yeah. do you know, Facebook actually punishes posts that say the word comment in them. So if you use the word comment, Facebook's algorithm assumes that you are telling people to engage and Facebook's priority is quality content. So it wants them to be engaging with you because you're good, not mm. because you told them to. So if you use the word comment, you will be shown to less people than if you don't use the word comment like share. Um so if you just say a question instead of comment below and tell me it's, this. It's like um, YouTube. If you put your Instagram handle in the description box, um, it's a link to another site and YouTube don't want you doing yeah, they that. It. Whereas you can on your video put like a little thumbnail in the bottom and show people what your like, – like this podcast is here, which is not the reason, but um, – we can do like a little thumbnail and show it and that to them they don't recognize that it's all about algorithms like yeah like they're a business too youtube are looking to make money too and if you put your instagram handle in your youtube description box that's taking your viewers to another site so youtube don't want that so they're not going to promote your video as much and so it's really important and then the thing is as well is that like when facebook do it they're doing it because they want the person looking at your posts to enjoy looking at your posts they want people to enjoy being on facebook not for them to be like oh it's all ads which there are enough of as it is so they want the content in between the ads to be conversational to be Mm -hmm. social so if you put in the post um you know how how what what's your favorite way to relax or what were your nails like for your like so you posted wedding nails and you say show me your wedding nails um Mm. i want to see them kind of thing like getting people to engage in that way telling people to engage is still a call to action because even though those their their nails like obviously they're not going to come to you to get a second set of bride's nails but then all your clients are seeing other brides nails and they're like, oh, can Jess do those ones? Yeah. And so you've actually got your customers giving your other customers ideas. <laughs> yeah, which is ideal. Yeah. That's that's so much easier. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's lots and lots of ways to have calls to action or you might see them as CTAs or C2As, short-end and marketing stuff. But a call to action, a lot of people mistakenly think means – call me and book an appointment yeah or click the online booking button which is why or, i was surprised when you said that earlier yeah no and 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 i don't want to be told i'm busy but when i next think about getting my nails done you should be top of mind because i know that i'm gonna leave feeling shiny or i'm gonna leave feeling more me than before like if i had a real bad day and i feel a bit lost Teresa's definition is going to draw me in heaps because I'm like I I just feel a bit lost today I want to feel more like me so that's where I go or Mm. yeah like I don't know so with your marketing you're really trying to get all of this across and it's extremely important that you understand that it's not about the name it's not about any of that it's about the story that your marketing tells you so your marketing has to tell us who you are the personality of your business how you're going to help me by making me feel like I've got sunbeams coming out my face when I leave. And then a call to action, which can just be, um, you know, the poll that Jessie was talking about. So then I feel loyal to her business. Or it could be at the other end, signing up to her mailing list so that I hear more stuff about her once a month and things like that. But a call to action. But, but the two things like like clicking on a poll, I'm not going to be like, oh, I'm busy. Don't ask me to do that. Because yes. that to me is me getting something. Yeah. Clicking on a poll is like me voting 
to get something. Whereas I find somebody asking me to sign up for their mailing list, I would really make sure that there was like no other things I was asking for them. And I would time it at a time where I know people have the time to flick through and be on Facebook. It's not like on a Monday at noon, give me your mailing address. No, I'm busy. I don't want to give it to you now. Whereas on a Saturday night, it's just like, oh, I'm kind of boring. Like yeah. I'm not going out. I'll just scroll through Facebook. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll sign up for your mailing list. Like it's all timing. And So this yeah. is what I would love you guys to do is to go to your Facebook page or your Instagram. And I want you to find a post. It doesn't matter how old it is that tells us um, what, what you're all about. So I don't want the most recent post that just says, here's a picture of some wedding nails. I don't want the post that's like, um, just these nails were done using this color blue. I want a post that tells me who you are in some mm. small way. I want you to go to your social media and find me a post that tells me who you are and then put it in the comments below, tag yourself in so that we can all follow each other um, and so that we can see good examples or even bad examples. If you want some help, you want us to have a look at it and be like, hey, actually, this is what I feel. So, you know, before we were going, okay, what, are, what does Aphrodite and Iris mean to us? Chuck that in the comments too or post it on our, our page because we really want to see some examples of the, this marketing definition, who you are, how you can help, a call to action, even if you've only got one piece of the puzzle so far. I'd really, really love to see those examples. I'm, I've got two to put in because when I first started, it was all about how am I going to make this shine thing? How am I going to show people how cool my name is? And so it was really about shining. And now, now I feel like, oh, everybody that comes to my page needs to see what I've done. And I, they need to be able to scroll through pictures of nails. And that's important too. But I think that I've lost along the way my my business personality yeah and i so, care yeah. much more about a business's personality than that it can do nails mm. or that it can cook food or that i can buy five dollar shelves from it because if you if you think about it when you follow people's like instagram handles and stuff it's it's usually because they're offering you something more than just things to look at so like there are i don't know i really like um, sort of beauty accounts where they're not just talking to me about their services. They're talking to me about their behind the scenes. They're talking to me about their life. They're talking to me about their successes. They're talking to me about their fails. They're showing me, a I don't like pictures of cats. They're showing me <laughs> pictures like of their kids. <laughs> like, like, I like it when they're showing me more than just what they can do. Yeah. Mm. But so that's their personality. Telling their story. Yeah. yeah. And and sticking with that personality is really important too. Like one of my friends runs an Instagram account for like an interior design account. And he's an incredible artist as well. But anytime that he posts pictures of his art, which is amazing, he gets no likes like <laughs> compared to anything else because they're not there for it. They're there yeah. for his business personality, which is interior design and oh. like a boho kind of theme and he strayed from that so the people that he has spent all this hard work attracting don't care because it's in the wrong place perfect example i follow i believe her name is stacy from my kids lick the bowl no interest in cooking hate it <laughs> hate all types of food prep don't oh, i do care about nutrition like I'm a good mom, but like, I don't care about that stuff, but I follow her because she's such a cool person yeah. and she's lovely and she's somebody I would want to be friends with if I lived closer and, and she shares things from her life, not just recipes and nutritional content and food and all that stuff. Like she's a real person. But then we all know that her feed is still curated and yeah. so it is still a business personality. She has still gone this is who I am. How she can help is by entertaining. And then the call to action is most likely, most of the time, liking a post or clicking an affiliate link and things like oh, that. Oh, you better believe if I was looking for a new recipe for Bliss Balls, I'd go straight to her blog. Like, yeah. But that's not the reason I follow her. But her, her who we are, her how we can help, and her call to action is all clear. Mm. And that's, that's what's making people successful is – 
when those three things are super clear. Mm. And that's what I think a lot of us get lost on. Like you were just saying that you've lost yeah. yours and I've definitely gone through phases of losing mine. Mm. And then usually it's when I do something like this and I'm teaching other people that I'm like, oh, yeah, I've just been like, oh, yeah. And and I find it fun when I'm being more personal on my account. Yeah. And you get more motivated and more passionate when like if you're focused on making people shine and then every day you're going, what can I do to make this next person shine? What can I do to be the person that makes her day so that tomorrow all she talks Mm. about is this amazing appointment she had yesterday like, what can I do to be doing, achieving my goals of making people shiny? And then you feel good about what you've done. It's not yeah. just I painted someone's nails and I did a good job of it. It's I made this person shine and I did it because I saw what she needed and I achieved it. So, like, when you are super focused on who you are, how you can help and calls to action are for the marketing – but then you have so much more passion and it shows. And I think you end up. And people are drawn to that. Yes, exactly. You end up more successful because you're mm. so clear on it and you're having fun. So, yeah. So um, we would love to know what you think about all of this. Like we said, I just found this definition of marketing somewhere ages and ages ago and it stuck with me. Um, but we'd love to see your examples as well that of, of marketing that tells us who you are and how you help and gives us. A feeling that is unique to your business and not just how you do nails definitely put a post in the comments below um if you want to follow us individually in between podcast episodes um then my handle on instagram and facebook is penny lawla nail artist and jesse's is shine nail design nz um and do we have a plan for next week? Are we going to do the competition free zone or we're not sure um, yet? I think we're going to do the competition free zone when we can get um, at least four of us on, which could be next week. So I think Rochelle will be here next week, Yeah, I think. Yeah, so, um, so possibly we'll be chatting about the competition free zone and why we feel that competition doesn't exist and competitors should shouldn't be, exist. Shouldn't exist. And competitors, uh, that, that, that doesn't exist. Um, so I think, yeah, we'll see. Mm. That might, if you have requests, check them in the comments. And otherwise, we will see you guys back uh, next week for next week's podcast episode, 5 o'clock New Zealand time, via our Facebook page, um, which is facebook.com slash Monaco Nail Academy. Um, you can find in between what we're up to on that Facebook page or on our website, www.monaco.ac.nz. And until then, have a wonderful week, and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.